Don't create bigger problems than you're trying to solve. In this educational episode, I'm going to address why you should never add your children, your kids' names as joint tenants on your property or your bank accounts and so forth. Uh, a lot of people don't think about this until it's too late. So I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist now for nearly five decades helping people optimize assets, minimize taxes, and empower what I call their authentic wealth. I've uh, spoken over 90,000 hours in my life at teaching the general public um, such things as asset protection. And I've actually trained a lot of attorneys on how to properly protect assets. And uh, they say, golly, Doug, you are doing a, a great service uh, to the general public telling them not to put their children's names uh, on their bank accounts and their checking accounts and on the deeds to their houses, thinking they're going to avoid probate by simply owning things in joint tenancy. We can't believe how many people do not understand this. So the purpose of this episode is to warn you. Now, first of all, why do people do that? Most of the time when I'm speaking in an audience, and I, I say, how many of you have added your children's names to your bank accounts, uh, savings, checking, and even have added your kids' names to uh, the deed on your house to avoid probate? And predictably, about a third of the audience goes, we have. Okay, so who told you to do that? And it's usually, you know, some well-intending friend or whatever. Well, well yeah, just add your kids' names uh, to the deed, uh, make them a joint tenant on your checking account so that if you die, that will not be probated. Because if you've watched my episode on uh, what probate is, probate sometimes can be a lengthy process uh, that will tie up assets in a checking or savings account or in a home, uh, waiting to go through and make sure all the creditors are satisfied, the federal uh, government with any taxes, the state, the local, and then the court costs, the attorney's fees, the executor's fees, and, and then any creditors before finally the heirs get it. And so people think they're clever by avoiding that process called probate. Well, you just add your child's name, joint tenancy. Uh, they now automatically get it when you die. Sounds like a simple solution, right? Well, I started out this episode saying, don't create bigger pr problems than what you're trying to solve. You may have solved probate on that asset, but you may have created way bigger problems than you even realized. Why? Okay. So there's a couple of uh, issues. Let's talk about the first one. By adding your children's names to a bank checking, savings account, uh, investment account. Um, and now you can name them as beneficiaries of, a, of an IRA or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about bank accounts, uh, the deed to your house, thinking, okay, so if we uh, die, uh, you, your spouse or whatever, uh, now because my child's name is on the house, uh, they will automatically get it because uh, it's under joint tenancy and we don't have to go through probate. It's just, we don't have to go through any of that mess. True, but what else did you just do? You just inherited your children's liabilities, okay? I could tell you horror story upon horror story. I remember one time uh, this couple in central Utah added their children's names to their, their retirement estate. And uh, when they did that, their son uh, got into trouble with the IRS and ended up owing back taxes of a quarter of a million bucks. And uh, the IRS, in less than one minute, went online and did, a, did an asset search on their son's assets because they're gonna go after the money to get the tax. In less than 60 seconds, they went, oh, this man owns 100% of a beautiful home, ranch, 
home in central Utah. Uh, we're going to take that because it's free and clear. And the IRS goes down there to sell it. And the parents are like, this isn't our son's home. It's our home. This is our retirement home. No, you added his name two years ago. Not only that, but you owe a gift tax. When you added his name, you should have paid a gift tax. But joint tenancy means he owns 100% too. See, it's interesting. Let me explain it this way. When you have a joint checking account, and uh, if it's got $1,000 in it, okay, and you own it jointly with your spouse, that means you could write out a check for the entire thousand, not just half of it. And your spouse could write out a check for the entire thousand, but does that mean there's 2,000 in there? No, there's only 1,000, but both of you own it all. You add a child and now they own it all. So when the IRS looked at it and said, sorry, the, your son has 100% joint tenancy, owns 100% of this house, not a third of it, 100% of it. You thought you were clever, we're taking your house. They lost their house because they added their son's name to it. I had another similar example where they added their child's name and their child got into an accident, didn't renew the car insurance, was uninsured, they were texting, they got sued. Uh, for uh, a million. I had another client who sued for five million, okay, uh, because of the, uh, uh, they were out on a, uh, on a youth activity and the wife let uh, a 16 year old who just got the driver's license drive the car and she wrecked it. And so the parents sued. Well, uh, the first thing they do is they do an asset search and they go, oh, look. Uh, this person, and they, they looked at this and their child who was uninsured, got sued for over a million bucks, owned 100% of their house and 100% of their checking and savings accounts. They went right after that because of joint tenancy. So you, if you put your child's names on those deeds and those accounts, you may avoid probate, but the bigger problem is you just inherited all your kids' liabilities, and if they get into trouble, uh, they own it all. Not a third, not a fourth, they own it all because you added them as a joint tenant to avoid probate. Was that worth it? What's the solution? You set up a trust. You protect your house and your assets in a trust. And when you do those right and you set up uh, entities like li limited liability companies, uh, then that will go down to your son or your daughter and avoid probate. But some people say, well, I don't want to spend a, a couple of thousand setting up a trust. Oh, so you want to lose your house and all the cash in your bank account, add in your child's name to avoid probate? That's, that's stupid, okay? So other than that, I don't have any strong feelings on the subject, but you avoid the problem by setting up a trust. Uh, rather than adding your kids' names. Now, what was the other thing I mentioned? I have had people who have done this. They have added their child's names to their bank accounts, their investment accounts, and their real estate, thinking they're avoiding probate. And the IRS finds out. And I remember one time the IRS came in during an audit and goes, oh, so uh, when did you do this? Well, five years ago, we added our children's names to avoid probate uh, to these real estate properties and to our investment accounts and our bank accounts. Uh, that was a gift. A gift? We just added their names. That was a gift. Because now they own it all. Uh, you should have paid a gift tax. You should have filed a gift tax return, and there's a certain exemption amount, but anything over that, you owe 37%. It was significant. 37%, they had to write out a check for hundreds of thousands of dollars in gift tax, plus penalties, plus interest, simply adding their child's name to their real estate and their bank accounts and their investment accounts because they didn't file a gift tax return. Don't create bigger problems than you're trying to solve by just adding your kids' names because you are gifting them that asset and you may owe a gift tax, let alone inheriting their liabilities. Is this scaring you? Whenever I say this in front of an audience, I see the blood drain out of people's faces and they immediately start jabbing their spouse and they immediately go down the next day and take their kids' names off. 
Well, sometimes just don't let the IRS know because now uh, they gifted it back and you know, there's all kinds of things. So you wanna you want make sure you undo it correctly. Just set up a trust and make sure you do it correctly so that you accomplish what you're trying to do to avoid probate without adding a whole bunch of other problems. Does that make sense? Hopefully this has been valuable uh, to you. Don't put things in joint tenancy. I don't own things in joint tenancy with my wife. We have a trust. I, I have a trust, my wife has a trust. We just don't do it because that means you both own it all. That means if somebody sues you, uh, if, if the house is in joint tenancy, they can take 100% of that house if you were the one that caused the accident or if your wife was the one, they can take 100% because you own it in joint tenancy. Just don't own things in joint tenancy is my simple advice. Go to an attorney to get the proper legal advice. That's my take, okay? Now, I wanna give you this book. It's called The Laser Fund. It's a 300-page financial asset optimization uh, book, but it talks about one of my favorite vehicles, the laser fund, how to accumulate access and transfer your money tax-free. As long as we're talking about liability protection, this is where I put my serious cash because it's next to impossible to penetrate in frivolous lawsuits. And so that's where I put my assets. You can read and learn why, and so you can claim your free copy by simply going to laserfund.com, laserfund.com, or click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that cost and I'll pay for the book. I'll fire out a hard copy, priority mail. Uh, there's also options there. If you also want to listen and learn, watch and learn, check out some of the educational uh, webinars we teach on a regular basis. You can even set up an appointment with one of the top financial strategists in America uh, with no obligation, no charge to see how you can implement the strategies that I teach in this book on optimizing assets and minimizing taxes. Because this is about you and your brighter future. I love providing value and insights into some opportunities uh, or maybe dangers you didn't even know existed before.